So right now I'm heating up a, a chunk of color and I'll use this to apply to one bubble that I will roll backwards over another bubble. You know, a process called Swedish overlay. She's juicy. My name is David Royce. I started blowing glass when I was 15. At a, at a shop, Kitty Corner, from the shop that we're in now. And I walked up and introduced myself and asked them how old I had to be to be an apprentice. And they told me that I had to be 18. And they asked how old I was. I told them I was 15. And they told me, that's all right, just come back tomorrow. We'll get one gather and then you know, shape it up and then we'll put the scarlet over the top of that. So I primarily work with functional, functional forms in, in glass. I've been moving into this, this series here, these sort of red, uh, red pieces that have iridescent spots on them. And I'm having a lot of fun uh, playing with different, different patterns within it, and I'm really enjoying this particular color palette at the moment. Yeah, nice and light. Yeah. Go ahead. A good, a good piece of glass is, is sort of a series of events that take place, and each, each step is as important as the last, the step before it. I definitely really enjoy working with the wet newspaper, and it, what it allows you to do is to get, yep. you know, within an inch to hold just a, a barrier that's maybe an inch thick between you and molten hot glass, which is something that is really extraordinary. You can actually feel it move and change shape in your hand because of what you're doing. It's quite quite special feeling. So uh, they, they really shouldn't call it glass blowing because really it's turning. If I would stop turning for a moment, it would drip right off the pipe. I enjoy experimenting with layering colors on top of one another. Glass blowing is a really visceral experience. It's a very true art form. You can't fake anything about it. You're in the moment completely. You can't be thinking about anything else or your work will fail. Glass tells you immediately if you're doing something incorrectly. And if you listen carefully, it, it can show you how to, f how to fix those things. The heat is extraordinary. It's 2,000 plus degrees at, at moments. And the heat's radiating off of furnaces and pieces that are, you know, your piece is inches away from your arm and it's 2,000 degrees and it's radiating and beating heat onto you. And, um, you know, we use some protection for certain parts of it, but, you know, you'll notice, you know, we never wear gloves on our hands because you can't, because you can't feel the rod turning and the, the subtle motion of the, of the glass. So I think, I think that's the, the extreme elements of glass blowing is some of what makes it interesting to the people that work with it and the people that watch it. You know, I like spicy food. I like, I like sensory experiences, and this sort of is a, you know, the ultimate sensory experience of fire. You have water, you have breath, all coming together to form you know, objects from a puddle into a vessel or a sculpture. It's pretty amazing. Color and the way you apply the color as a glass artist defines you as, as an artist. So the way, you know, it's like what color a painter decides to put on a canvas and, and where they decide to put those colors define who they are as, as an artist to, to the outside world, to people looking at their art. I think we're ready to flatten it. You want to you wanna heat it up and we'll flatten this? Where are you going with it? Just in the box. 